Rutgers football got a taste of the Big Ten briefly. Now steps back out of the conference with a date against Tulane on Saturday before diving back into Big Ten play for good for the rest of 2014. We bring in uh, Kevin Rescio of On the Banks. It's the SB Nation platform for Rutgers football. Kevin, we appreciate your time. Thanks so much for joining us. Uh, let's uh, look at the obvious void on this football team. Paul James, I caught the game against Washington State. He was a beast. One of the big reasons why Rutgers went out to the West Coast and, and won that game against the Cougars, he goes down with an ACL rupture. He's he's gone for the rest of the season. You've got a couple of replacements in uh, Justin Goodwin and uh, Desmond Peoples. Your 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 thought about uh, the running back situation and and if this is going to uh, possibly uh, bring Gary Nova more into the forefront of this offense. This Saturday it'll be a good test. Um, Tulane is not the most imposing team, um, and really, Paul James has been great, no doubt, but he's only really half the story. The other part of the story is that the offensive line, with all the experience coming back, has been playing really out of their minds, opening up huge holes for Paul James, letting him run right, right into the back. Um, while losing a player like Paul James is, is terrible, it's devastating, um, you know, his backups have actually done pretty well, especially in last week's game against Navy. Um, Justin Goodwin, true sophomore, and uh, Desmond Peoples, redshirt sophomore, coming in uh, after James got hurt, rushing uh, for a combined 186 yards. So there's no doubt that they can carry the load. Um, I, I'm, I'm skeptical to say that it'll be just as good. I mean, to replace someone like Paul James is, is, is really not doable. Um, the real test will come in uh, in the Big Ten to see if the offensive line can uh, withstand the, the, su the size of the Big Ten and if the running backs can, can really get into that backfield. Very interesting career for Gary Nova. You've got better insight than I do, but I catch Rutgers a few times a year, and here's a kid who's now a senior. Seems like he's been playing forever uh, there. He's compiling his statistics. He's going to go into the annals of Rutgers football for a very long time, and uh, I believe I came across the stat 11th, in career passing yardage right now in college football. So Gary Nova um, has always won the job and proceeded to lead this team to postseason play. At the same time, critical mistakes in, in key situations has been uh, the mark of his uh, legacy at this point in Rutgers football. So your, your thoughts about Nova's play through four games and uh, going forward? You're right. It seems like he has been in Piscataway for, for a decade almost. Um, Extremely inconsistent. Even as long as I've been following uh, Gary Nova and Rutgers, uh, you know, your guess is as good as mine as to how well he's going to do on any given Saturday. Um, I think that with Ralph Friesen on board, he's gotten a lot better, at least in, in, in some of the games, the Penn State game notwithstanding. The real issue is that there's really just no one better um, behind him. The back of Chris Laviano, really young guy, he only has a handful of actual game snaps that mostly came, out, actually all came this season against, uh, you know, not very good opponents. So there's really no one tested behind him. Uh, and to give someone like that uh, the, the reins to an offense when they have such a good chance to, to make some noise in the Big Ten, it's just not really possible. We're stuck with Gary Nova for better or for worse. Um, you know what, you just go out there and you hope that he plays... Uh, mistake-free football, which has been a problem for him sometimes, but he's definitely capable of surprising some people in, in, in spots where you least expect it. Um, you know, the Arkansas games, uh, coming back against Temple, I mean, they're, they're sort of against bad teams, but sometimes he'll surprise you when you least expect it, in bad ways or in good ways. Kevin, you've got a junior in Leonte, a Carew at wide receiver. He's been productive throughout his career as a junior, nine touchdown receptions career-wise, uh, two touchdowns this year, 18 receptions. Uh, uh, Gary Nova needs support. He can't, uh, he's not a dual-thread guy, he needs support on the outside. Uh, your thoughts about the wide receiver core, and are, are you comfortable with these guys making dynamic, game-changing plays? No doubt, Leontay Carew. Some of the catches that he can make are unreal. Um, some of the best hands that I've actually seen in the game while watching college football. It's funny, there's a quote in the pre, in, in training camp this season where uh, Darius Hamilton, a six, the 6'4", 270-pound defensive tackle, is saying that 6'1", uh, Leontay Carew has bigger, stronger hands than himself. So, I mean, that just gives you a little insight onto how Carew is such a great wide receiver. 
I couple that with his elite speed, you know, uh, moving down the sideline, he's really the entire package you want in a wide receiver. Great hands, great physicality, plays with real physical toughness that I think is necessary uh, to play in a power conference. Um, beyond Carew, however, it, it's, it's been a bit of, of a learning process. Um, you know, on, uh, two of our uh, next-in-line wide receivers have been out for quite, quite some time, uh, Andre Patton and Ruhan Peel. Um, we should get one of them back uh, this Saturday. Um, hopefully they can uh, help take some coverage away from Carew. Um, also the tight end, Tyler Crops, a big tight end, 6'6", um, around 230 pounds. Great target, but he's really been bottled up by a lot of coverage. Uh, the defensive coordinator, Joe Rossi, and Kyle Foot have been saying that a lot of defenses have been scheming around Tyler Croft to take him away from the passing game. So you can kind of see where Gary Noah's been struggling and why he's been struggling. Um, they realize where the targets are, and, and de opposing defenses are scheming for those targets. So hopefully some, some other targets uh, come through in the passing game to take, take some of the coverage away from Carew and Croft. Let's talk some defense, Kevin. Uh, I, I think it's a surprise to people when they find out how many NFL players are produced by this football program, even before, of course, joining the Big Ten. So that may even increase uh, with uh, a different recruiting tact going forward. But much of that's in the front seven on defense. Uh, specifically, now you've got a couple defensive ends that are making plays. This team has only played one Big Ten game, so I don't know how valid these stats are when we talk about conference ranks at this point. But I... I think it's fairly legitimate saying Rutgers right now first in the Big Ten with 17 sacks. They move a lot up front. They've got a couple of defensive ends in uh, David Maluski and uh, Dewani Mira. I hope I didn't botch his name. We'll, no, we'll that's exactly right. There in, in talking about uh, this Rutgers defense and, and how it looks, and, and Penn State would, although the the test against Washington State would would uh, be telltale uh, as well. So, so your thoughts about the defense? I think that the defensive line was probably the most hyped uh, position group for Rutgers, and I think it's fair to say that they've lived up to that hype so far. Uh, one of the biggest stories is a redshirt freshman defensive end, Kamoko Ture, um, coming out of uh, Newark High School, Week High School. He actually only has, before coming to Rutgers, one year of high school football experience. So an incredibly raw athlete playing on the defensive line for Rutgers. He's leading the team. Uh, with sacks, including a, a massive sky-high block against Penn State uh, in the first Big Ten game. Um, we'll see going forward whether uh, some team scheme towards him. Uh, he's sort of the pass rushing specialist, comes in on third downs. His, his only job is to rush the quarterback. So we'll see if maybe his production falls now that he's becoming sort of a bigger story. But I, I think the biggest thing is that uh, Darius Hamilton, the former five-star uh, defensive tackle prospect that committed to Rutgers over basically every other program in the nation. He's playing up to his, to his, to his hype. Uh, former five-star prospect, as I said before, wreaking havoc in the backfield, getting one-and-a-half sacks against uh, Christian Hackenberg in Penn State. A like one of the captains of the entire team. There's no doubt without him that I'm not sure if, if the entire defense would have, ha would have had this, uh, this, this high billing of the sack rate. So a lot of veteran help experience on the defensive line, a lot of depth. Uh, so that's the key because uh, defensively, for the rest of the defense, the secondary is, is still struggling, uh, giving up a lot of big passing plays. It's kind of an all-or-nothing defense. If they don't get the sack, then uh, all bets are off. You know, it could be a huge completion downfield, big play uh, down the sideline. So, if it makes you feel better, Kevin, uh, saw Oregon play Washington State uh, <laughs> last week, and. Uh, Connor Halliday uh, had his way with Oregon, the number two team in the country as well, through for almost 500 yards and almost pulled off the upset. So the, the win at Washington State might be more significant than we think. I hope so. I did, I did see in week two that they also lost to Nevada, so they're definitely a, a hard team to project right now. I'm hoping that they're closer to the, uh, the Oregon game than the Nevada game. Kevin, I think if people are just starting to uh, find out about Rutgers and may start to watch some football once they play the better teams in the Big Ten, uh, versus what they've faced so far, other than Washington State and Penn State. Um, Steve Longa, the linebacker, may be a guy that uh, they should watch out for, a first-team freshman All-American, uh, making plays all over the place. He already has three sacks and 28 tackles to lead the team, so uh, is he as good as the stat line? I, I have no doubt. Um, 
the guy that he replaced, uh, Kasim Green, who's now with the Chicago Bears, Kasim Green, he played with a, a ferocity and, and just pure speed. He was actually, a, he used to be a safety and moved down to linebacker, so he had that speed uh, in the linebacking court. Longa, it seems, has that same uh, physical capability. Uh, you see him flying all over the place. He can drop down in coverage as well as shoot right into the backfield. So he has the physical tools necessary to be a star for Rutgers defense. Okay, let's talk about this two-lane game. Uh, the Green Wave uh, spoke with some of their players in the offseason. Uh, they're coming off a bowl appearance, six wins uh, after they're head on to postseason play and really being uh, down for like a decade. So they're, they're better than they've been. Uh, they come to your place, and uh, this is one of those games where a program like Rutgers obviously needs to win it. But if you do start to do the math toward adding up to a bowl game, if you figure Rutgers is a three or four win Big Ten team, then they, they pretty much have to clear the slate in the non-conference play, and they've taken care of business to date. So your, your thoughts about Tulane? Uh, the, the narrative for the Tulane game is that it's a trap game. Uh, coming off uh, a nice bounce back win from Navy, and then looking ahead to uh, the night game against Michigan. Uh, a lot of people think that Rutgers might overlook Tulane. I'm not sure that that's the case. Um, the last time Tulane visited in 2010, uh, they spoiled homecoming for Rutgers, so I think the players will remember that. They'll remember how, embar how embarrassed they were on that day. I think they'll come to play. I mean, furthermore, Tulane, yes, they're coming off a bowl, but uh, you know, I spoke with some one of the beat writers for, uh, uh, for the group of five for SB Nation. And, you know, he projected that Tulane could be looking at a 4-8 season and that the fans shouldn't really be angry about that. They're such a young team, young skill position players. Their two top running backs are freshmen. They have a retro freshman, a quarterback, and Tanner Lee. They've played some teams tough, especially Jordan going down by three at halftime when they played. But honestly, it's just it's hard to see that, that they can pull off the upset this Saturday. All right, Kevin, before we let you go, let's talk some Big Ten football and what you see going down the line. Uh, the one indication directly is, of course, the Penn State game, and who knows what's going to happen in the Big Ten. I think uh, most people consider Michigan State the gold standard. Ohio State a uh, step back with the loss of Braxton Miller. Penn State, probably one of the top five or six teams in the league, and that game was uh, a game that Rutgers had right in his hands. Uh, before the last drive of that football game. So your, your thoughts about uh, your comfort level in this conference that is, is a bit down but still a step up from what Rutgers uh, has competed in uh, uh, in the Big East and the American Athletic. I would say that at this, po at this moment, at this point in the season, uh, Rutgers themselves has been uh, pretty much what I expected. Um, a, a good team, decent team. Uh, probably won't win the conference or the division, really. Um, close game against Penn State. I thought it would be close. Not sure if they'd pull out the win, but it was at least close. The difference is is the Big Ten itself. Um, I knew that the Big Ten might be one of the weaker power conferences. I didn't think that they would be this weak. Um, that makes my prospects for Rutgers a little higher than I thought. You know, I pegged Rutgers as a six-win team. Now I think that they can pull off some upsets that I don't think people even gave them a chance for. Uh, especially looking at Michigan, uh, that's a, a really just a terrible situation over in Ann Arbor. I'm not sure how long Brady Hook has left. I, I, if Rutgers doesn't open up his favorites uh, next week, I, I would be actually surprised. Um, Ohio State, I'm not really sold on JT Barrett. Uh, they obviously have boatloads of talent on, all over the roster, so They'll still, and it's in Columbus, so I don't think Rutgers can really steal one there. But, I mean, you're talking about a Nebraska and Wisconsin team that have obvious issues. Wisconsin, uh, another issue with quarterback, Tanner McAvoy, how good is he really? Um, Nebraska is obviously tough. Uh, Amir Abdullah is crazy good. Um, and Indiana, it's, and then you have the back end of the schedule. Indiana, I mean, they lose to Bowling Green, which got pasted by Wisconsin, but then they go out and they beat a ranked SEC team on the road. I have no idea what to expect. Back there, and then Maryland, uh, they're definitely decent, but it's really hard to peg. And then Michigan State at the end, which probably is a loss. So, I think uh, so far my expectations are are, are, are being met. Um, I still think they're on track for six, maybe even seven wins, and, and I think Rutgers can get to a bowl game this year. All right, Kevin, we appreciate uh, the information and the insight. Anything in particular on your website there, on the banks, on the SB Nation uh, platform that uh, you're touting at this point? You know, I want to. 
I give a shout out to my writing crew. Uh, you know, Dave White, Garrett Stepien, Bob Cancro, Andy Egan, and Ray Ransom. Uh, this season, we decided to expand, and the collection of writers I have now, I, I couldn't do without them. I mean, they're experts at Rutgers uh, on Rutgers football on, and basketball. Me, I, I'm just a figurehead. So without them, uh, I don't know where I don't know where we'd be right now. So I thank them very much. That's good stuff, Kevin Rascio of uh, Rutgers uh, SB Nation platform there on the banks and we appreciate your time Kevin again uh, you're welcome anytime and we'll talk some uh, hopefully be able to track you down to talk uh, some other Big Ten action uh, coming up in the next couple months. Always a pleasure Mark thanks a lot.